Hello and welcome to Access Sports Now Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers. I'm Chris McGee. We got Hall of Famer at the end. Big game, James Worthy. We got a two-time champion with the Lakers. That was 09 and 2010. Jordan Farmar, Lakers lose their third straight game as they returned home after that five-game trip. Simply got outplayed by Denver, guys, uh, as tonight the fellas uh, struggled uh, offensively. They turned the ball over a lot. This is their first game without LeBron James, and they did not fare well. Big game. No, not, uh, not at home after a, uh, a, a pretty good long road trip coming back from Milwaukee, Indiana. You needed to recover and reboot. I think it was trending. You know, they won some games when they weren't playing that well, and uh, this is what happens when you, you know, run up against a good team and all of a sudden Milwaukee, you know, gets you and then come home, Denver gets you. So, uh, you know, they didn't really do the things they needed to do. They had 19 turnovers, Geeter, that led to 24 points. Mm -hmm. uh, assists, they only had 18, uh, and uh, Denver had 31. Fast break points weren't there. Lakers only had nine. Uh, so it was it was not it was not a good 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 performance tonight. Sixty points in the paint uh, for Denver. That's something that the Lakers usually win with their size. So they got to go back to the drawing board with or without LeBron. They got to get back to playing good defense again. They develop a nice cushion. They got a little cushion sure. early on, but they really need to get back. They got a big one coming on on Christmas Day. You don't want to go three in a row. Again, it's not a lack of effort. It's just not playing well, right, Jordy? Yeah, they look very discombobulated. Yeah. Sometimes when you get back home after a long road trip, your, your timing's all off, your sleep schedule's off, uh, and nobody's feeling sorry for the Lakers. That, that game is circled on everybody's calendar. So mm -hmm. when they come into Staples or when the Lakers come into town, they're excited and energetic and ready to play. And the Lakers just didn't have that enthusiasm, that energy tonight. What did you see, Jordy? It was 67-65, 6 minutes and 46 seconds left. Looks like the Lakers had got a little momentum. They're leading by two. And from that moment on, the Nuggets completely dominated. They went on a 14-15 to 15 run over the next, I don't know, 8 to 10 minutes, really, uh, to blow that game. Open. Really, it was a couple things in that little segment. It was a couple turnovers, a couple missed shots, uh, forced Spring Vogel to call another quick timeout, and then the energy just shifted. The momentum shifted, and Denver took advantage of it and just kept riding that momentum. Uh, the Lakers kind of put their heads down and felt a little sorry for themselves, and Denver was just picking up on that and, and continuing to attack. Yeah, one of the first times that it just looks like they were playing hard, but just without a purpose, like going through the motions a little yeah. bit, like waiting for Denver to kind of, you know, uh, give them an opportunity to, to make their run, and Denver never did, and the Lakers never really went out and grabbed it. You know, they just played hard and shot some shots, but didn't really like they had that fierce uh, competition that we needed to go out and take this in the third, fourth quarter. You know, all of us were talking right before halftime when we looked and we saw that the Lakers only had six assists. And that's just unlike this Laker team. And it's their first game playing without LeBron. We talked a lot about that in the pregame show. What kind of mindset do you have? And you expect that ball to move a little bit more. It just seemed like a lot of pounding, uh, a lot of you know, dumping it in, and, and a little bit stagnant, Jordy. Yeah, I think you realize that LeBron James is actually the head of the snake. Mm -hmm. And when you're coming to play the Lakers, they're going to say, try to stop LeBron. So with him out of it, it's almost done for them. And, and the Lakers look discombobulated. Like they didn't know where to turn, where, where things should start, where the offenses should be initiated. And it got very stagnant, very one-sided, very like selfish style basketball. I know that we don't have any selfish guys on the team, but just it kind of got into that mode throughout the game. Yeah, big game. You look and you see, you know, uh, the Lakers, with the, you, you mentioned their last four games, uh, 19 turnovers, 19 turnovers, 22 turnovers, and then 19 turnovers uh, again tonight. The new starting lineup, you put in Avery Bradley and Rajon Rondo, but really you look at this team, it's just AD and Kuz, the only two guys in double figures. Yeah, that means that, you know, the ball wasn't moving. You know, uh, again, uh, only six points, I think, on the fast break. So they got to figure out a way to play without LeBron. I mean, Rondo's a great point guard. He's got to figure out how to way to zip the ball, get guys quicker shots, uh, and guys have to take their shots. You know, a lot of times shots are there, they pass them up. Uh, so, but, you know, defensively, there's no excuse for not, you know, being able to, to defend at home. You know, it's funny, we talked a lot about Rondo at the end of last year, and when we thought, you know, his role coming off that bench, uh, playing that 20 to 23 minutes is where he'd be so valuable. The game, it seems like when he has those starters minutes, and, and the team is just going to run differently without LeBron James and Rondo in there. He, he's a different style of player. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's just the nature of anything. When somebody's different and their, their characteristics are different, it's going to affect the team completely differently. You look at the guys who have been playing consistent in a lot of minutes, 
their shots that LeBron James just creates for them are wide open, corner threes, things like that, that they just didn't have those opportunities tonight because there wasn't LeBron James mm -hmm. demanding all that attention. Yeah, AD, by the way, still delivered James 32 points. Yeah, he could get his. Yeah. You know, points are not a problem for AD. He can get his at, at any point. But get it back to LeBron, you know, uh, Rondo's not going to draw the same type no. of attention. When he, when he goes downhill, they're not going to come off of him like they do LeBron. LeBron, they kind of collapse a little bit. That makes it a little easier. I, I think LeBron at this stage of his career uh, knows where to find people a little better. Uh, so, but they, they're they not used, it's like you were saying, they're not used to playing uh, with Rondo as, as a starter. So that, that took a little bit of getting used to, and I don't think it ever you know, materialized. And you can't defend turning the ball over. They turn the ball over a lot, which led to a lot of easy buckets on the other end, and yeah. that just creates a bigger deficit, a bigger hole. People start looking around at whose fault it was or how do we get out of this situation. Yeah. It just creates more uncomfortability amongst the team. Yeah, I'm curious uh, what the challenge is for Frank Vogel and the staff when, you know, it seems like y you have certain guys out in the beginning of the year and they're rolling, and then another guy's out and you start to roll. Now you're starting to get everyone back, except LeBron, obviously, but you're starting to work in that rotation again and who plugs in where, and, and, and it's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, how it, it all fits. It is, and, you know, I'm not, not trying to give them an excuse, but give them the benefit of the doubt. They are a team that just started to play together this year, and I think that early success kind of made people feel like they had arrived, but they're still kind of figuring out different lineups, you know, when, when you're starting, lineup is disruptive. I don't think they figured that out yet. So uh, as, as, as good as they've played with their record, they still got to figure each other out. You were thinking AD was fine. I didn't like the way it looked in slow motion, but it never looks good in slow motion. I guess the good news, Jordy, is that he, he went back out there in play, but I think I was pretty happy when he actually went out and sat out the rest of the game. Lakers are down 22, so I was, I was happy to see him sit, and, and obviously we'll hear from him later, but it just didn't look great. It never looks great to have one of the best players in the game yeah, go down or hyperextend anything, um, but I think he'll be fine. Uh, it was nice to see him go out, yeah. let some other guys play. The game was over. It's a long-term view in that instance to, to look at the rest of the season instead of tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm like James. I'd rather not see a slow motion uh, <laughs> replay. Oh, I, just never looked good. I can't watch him. Yeah. Are you concerned? Walk. You know, you. I'm glad that he was walked off. Yeah. You never know how you're going to feel the next this yeah, morning. You know, sometimes you do something that feels like just a little minor strain. You wake up the next morning and something else. But according to what I saw, I, I hope it's not anything in the morning. Yeah, I think we're all a little scarred, too, because we remember how fragile a, a season can be when mm -hmm. a year ago almost on Christmas in Roland, winning all these games, starting to feel real good about the young court of LeBron. He goes down. Changes an entire season. So. Are you saying we should keep LeBron no, I'm just and saying Davis we're out? No, we're just scarred is what I'm saying. Every little fall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, let's get you.